Now our overall goal for this unit is to figure out how to solve full-blown trusses. So identify how big our reaction forces need to be, the forces within the truss itself, any angles that we need. So there's essentially three steps that we need to go through in order to solve for a full truss. One we've already talked about, which is to figure out if your truss is statically determinate. So to figure out based on the joints and the members and the reaction forces, if we can even solve the problem. Number two, which is what this video is about, is all about external forces, where we're actually going to solve for the reaction forces that make sure your truss is in static equilibrium. And the third step, the next video is going to be all about internal forces, which is figuring out how much force each member is going to provide and whether that force is in tension or in compression. Now, when solving for an external force, there's essentially five steps that we need to take in order to solve for that. Now, the first one is we're going to take the overall truss that we're trying to identify and we're going to replace its pins and rollers with their reaction forces. So we know that a pin is going to provide a vertical force and a horizontal force. We know that a roller is going to provide a force that's perpendicular to our surface. Number two is we're going to check for static determinancy, make sure that we can even solve our truss. And number three, which is kind of what this video is about, is solve for that static equilibrium. Now, step number four is kind of an important step where we are letting the math tell us if our initial drawing or guesses are correct. So as you start going through the process, we're going to use kind of a, a convention to represent up and down, left and right, clockwise, counterclockwise, whose answer is going to tell us if our guess is correct or not. So thinking about our directions, in order for everything to be in static equilibrium, your forces in the X direction need to be balanced, your forces in the Y direction need to be balanced, and your moments need to be balanced. But we want to especially define what positive and negative are for each of those three variables. So in terms of X, we're going to define a positive X force as one that is pushing or pulling to the right and a negative X force is one that is pushing or pulling to the left. In the Y direction, something that is pushing or pulling up is going to be considered a positive Y value, which means that down is going to be a negative value. Now for moments, we already kind of talked about that a little bit where a positive moment is one that is counterclockwise and a negative moment is going to be one that is clockwise. So again, why that's important is as we set up these equations together, we're going to identify them as a positive or a negative value. And if those are flipped at the end of our work, that means that our guess was incorrect and we just need to change our diagram up just a little bit. So then after we've solved for static equilibrium, step number five is to redraw your truss to prep for internal forces. So we're not quite to the final answer, but we're getting ready to look at every single little tiny joint to see what's going on. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get into an example of a beam to give us a slight intro into external forces and then we're gonna get into the meat and potatoes with external forces for a truss. All right, here we go. So what we're gonna do is before we get to an actual truss, we're just gonna practice on a beam. So we've got an example where we have a couple forces acting on the beam itself, and we're going to be using this truss template to solve for it. So everything that we have here is laid out for you. So we have step one, which is drawing in your truss. Step two is finding static determinancy and on and on and on. So we're going to focus on the first half. So kind of that first side of the external forces page. Um, and we're just going to walk through this step by step by step for a beam and then for a full blown truss. So make sure you have a copy of the template in front of you. Um, otherwise, it's kind of a lot of work to get that stuff set up. So step one is telling us we need to draw that truss into the box on the right and we're going to draw all of our forces in there including replacing pins and rollers with their reaction forces so let's do it i got my handy dandy ruler and we're just going to make a quick little drawing of what we got here i like this one this is nice and easy so we have our beam 
Um, it looks like I've got a pin over on the left side, so that means I'm going to have a reaction force. Let's call that RAY. I'm going to call this joint A. And we have a reaction force in the X direction as well. Over on the other side, we have a roller, so we must have a Y force. Let's call this uh, joint B. Make our life easier. And then it looks like we have two other forces acting. Now these aren't technically joints. I'm gonna call these kind of like points more than joints. So we've got um, point C where we have, uh, oops, excuse me, 150 pounds of force going straight down. And then over here on point D, we have 200 pounds going down as well. So we're just taking that truss and we are making it so that we're only looking at the forces acting on the object. So I just replaced my pins and my rollers with their respective forces. So step two, let's see if we can even figure this thing out. Uh, I'm going to use my static determinancy equation. So two times my joints. Um, I have joint A and joint B. So I have two right there. Let's see, that should equal my members, which is just one member plus my reaction forces. So we've got one, two, three. And last time I checked, four equals four, which means, heck yes, we can solve this thing. All right, we're good to go. So let's dig into it. Now what we need to do is focus on the static equilibrium. So we have these little cheats here, which is telling us that all of our forces in the x direction need to be zero. All of our forces in the y direction need to add up to zero and all of our moments need to add up to zero. So everything essentially needs to cancel out to make sure that we are in static equilibrium. So let's dive in. Now what we need to do is we need to figure out which order we're gonna do this in. And typically what I like to do is figure out where we have the most information or maybe where the calculation is gonna be the easiest. Um, in this case, let's see, I have one, two, three, four in the Y direction. I don't know two of them, so that's probably not a great decision. I only have one force in the X direction. That might make my job pretty easy, actually. So let's let's go with that one. So what I'm gonna say is um, all of my forces in the X, in this case is RAX, and because it's going to the right, I'm gonna keep that as a positive value. All of our X forces need to add up to zero. So we're done. Look at that. Okay, so we must not need any reaction force in the X direction for that, uh, that pin. Cool, that makes our, uh, our job way, way, way easier. So now again, I'm a little bit nervous diving into the Y direction because we have two knowns and two unknowns. That's not really gonna help us out. Maybe we should jump to moments. Let's use that. So I'm going to strategically pick a point. Since Rx doesn't, or since Rx is zero, it doesn't really matter. Let's just stick with, with joint A. So I'm gonna pretend that this is my fulcrum and everything is rotating around because of that. So let's figure out our positive and our negative moment. So if this is my member, the force on C and D are pushing us in the clockwise direction. So those are gonna be negative moments. So I'm gonna say negative moment from force C minus that moment from force D. So I wrote that as negative because it's gonna provide a clockwise moment plus the moment from RBY is zero because if RBY were the only force, that's going to provide a counterclockwise moment. All right, so let's uh, let's break it down a little bit. So I know that these moments are a force times a distance. So I'm going to keep that negative there. And we have 150 for my force C. And the distance, oh shoot, I forgot to put my distances on there. That's going to be kind of hard. So we've got what? Three feet. We've got three feet. And we've got four feet. Okay, now all is right with the world. 
So this guy is three feet away from my perpendicular distance. So I'm going to throw a three in there. Minus the force of D is 200. And that distance away from our fulcrum is going to be six feet plus my force RBY, which I'm not sure what that is. That's what we're trying to solve for times the distance. So it looks like we've got 10 feet going on there equals zero. Shoot, almost ran out of room. Uh, so now it's a matter of plugging and chugging. So let's use our fancy fancy calculator to see if we can figure that out. So negative 150 times 3 minus 200 times 6. So I've got negative 1650 plus RBY times 10 equals 0. I'm going to add 1650 to both sides, which means I have RBY times 10 equals 1650. And if we divide everything by 10, I know that RBY is 165 pounds. Sweet. And it's a positive number, so I know that I'm in the right direction. So maybe I'll update it right there just so I've got it. Beautiful. Okay. So now all we have to do is figure out what ray is. So if I set up my forces in the y direction, I have ray as a positive value, so I'm going to keep that positive. I have FC is going down in my y direction. So I'm going to say that's negative FC. The force on position D is also going down, so I'm going to write that as a negative value. And then RBY, we already found out, is a positive 165, so I'm going to keep that as positive in my, my calculations. So notice how the positive and negative mean direction for X, Y, and moments. So let's get it in there. So we have RAY, FC is 150, FD is 200. RBY is 165, and they all need to add up to zero. So we've got negative 150 minus 200 plus 165. So we have Ray minus 185 equals zero, and that tells us that Ray equals 185 pounds. And since that came out to be positive, we know that we don't have to, uh, to flip anything. Perfect, and let's update that thing right there. Perfect, so now we've solved for all of our reaction forces. We figured out RAX is zero, we figured out RBY is 165 from our moments, and we just figured out that RAY has to be 185 pounds up to maintain static equilibrium. Perfect. And notice how none of these numbers came out to be negative, so we know that our guesses in our drawing is correct. Fantastic. So we've solved for all of our reaction forces. Now we just need to prepare for our last step, which is going to be internal forces. So normally we would have to use SOHCAHTOA to figure out the angles that are occurring within our work, but since it's just a straight beam, we don't have to worry about that, which is awesome. Now one last step is we need to redraw this, we need to label things, and we're going to modify one minor idea. So we have RAY as 185 pounds going up. RAX is nothing, so I'm just going to not even write that thing. We have RBY which we solved as a positive 165 pounds going up. And then we've got the force on position C as 150 pounds and the force on position D as 200 pounds. Now there's no angle, so we don't have to worry about that. But the last thing we're going to do is I'm going to erase the middle part of that member and I'm going to draw arrows pointing in. And I'll show you why we do that when we get to the internal forces video. But this is just preparation for our last step of a truss solve. 
So that's how to solve a beam. Let's look at a more complicated situation where we need to find the moments for a truss. All right, now it's time for the big leagues where we need to take a fat old truss and figure out what do those reaction forces have to be in order to maintain static equilibrium. So we've got our truss hanging out. And our first step in the template is we need to replace our pins and rollers with their proper reaction forces. So I'm going to sketch this out just so I don't have to keep looking back and forth. We've got something that looks like this. All right, my dimensions don't matter that much. As long as I've got the number in there later on, we are good to go. Excellent. We've got joint A, B, C, and D. Looks like we've got a force going to the right off of joint B. We've got a force going down off of joint C. I'm going to make sure I remember my lengths this time. Uh, now let's figure out our reaction forces. So because we have a pin over here, we must have a Y force. Now I'm not sure if that's going to be up or down, but our calculations will let us know. We've got an X force. We're going to call RAX. And again, I'm drawing it to the right, but you know, I could be wrong. That's okay. And then finally, we've got a roller, which is only going to provide a force in the y direction and I'm going to name that uh, R D Y. So my reaction force on joint D in the y direction. Sweet, we got a pretty drawing. So now let's figure out if we can even solve this puppy. So we've got two times our joints, one, two, three, four joints is equal to the number of members which is one, two, three, four, five. Ooh, got a good feeling about this one. And one, two, three reaction forces. Sweet. So because eight equals eight, we can solve this thing. Excellent. All right. Now let's dig into the nitty gritty. So we need to make sure that the sum of all of our forces in the X is zero, Y is zero, and the moments are zero as well. So let me think. Okay. So I have two forces that are purely in the x direction so i have racks and force b that might be a good place to start because i know one and i don't know the other uh, in the y direction i have one two three but i don't know two of them probably not a great idea let's let's start with the x in this case um, so let's set up our equation before we plug numbers in so i'm going to say positive rax because i drew that thing going to the right which is a positive value and because FB is also going to the right, I'm going to write that as a positive value. Now, intuitively, we probably have a good idea which way RAX needs to be, but I'm going to show you how the calculations help you figure that out. So we've got RAX plus FB. Let's plug in those numbers. Plus 500 equals zero. And if I solve for that, if I subtract 500 from both sides, I find that RAX equals negative 500 pounds. So what that means is my guess was not correct. So that negative is telling me I need to flip that RAX. So let's do that. I'm going to erase my arrowhead over here. So instead of going to the right, RAX must be going to the left with 500 pounds. So notice I'm not writing negative 500 pounds, I'm saying 500 pounds to the left. And that's really important for some of our future calculations. Sweet, we found RAX. Uh, let's keep going. Again, those Y forces make me nervous. There's two unknowns and one known. I'm going to skip that Y direction for right now. Let's jump to moments. So if I pick joint A is my fulcrum. I kind of eliminate two moments right off the bat. So let's pick joint A. I'm going to denote that by writing an A right in there. And let's get this going. So if my 
fulcrum is joint A, and I have a force pushing this direction. It looks like it's going to tilt everything in a clockwise direction, which is negative. So I'm going to say negative moment provided at joint B. Uh, my FC is doing the same thing. That's going to be clockwise. So that has to be a negative value. Negative MC. And then RDY, the way I drew it, is going to make us go in a counterclockwise direction, which is positive. So I'm going to say plus the moment provided by DY is zero. Sweet. Let's get into it. So I'm going to keep that negative for MB. Since my moment is a force times a perpendicular distance, I'm going to take 500 times the distance from the fulcrum. So if I think about it, if this is kind of the plane of my force and this is my fulcrum, I'm looking for this distance, which is 12 feet. So negative 500 times 12 minus MC. So my force is 600. And my distance would be, what, 24? Plus the moment provided at dy. So the force is my reaction force. I don't know what that thing is quite yet. But I know my distance is going to be 32 feet equals 0. Oh, boy, ran out of room. All right, let's do some calculations. So uh, negative 500 times 12 minus 600 times 24 is going to be negative 20400. Whoo, it's a lot of force. Plus RDY times 32 equals zero. And if I add that value all the way to the other side, I get RDY times 32 equals 20400. And if I divide everything by 32, I find that RDY is equal to 637.5 pounds. And it came out to be a positive number, so it must mean that my, my guess was correct. Sweet, so we know RDY, let's input that into our work. All right, last but not least, we've got to find a ray. Come on, ray, what are you? So in the y direction, I have ray, I have fc, and I have rdy. So let's set up our equation based on direction. So ray, the way that I drew it, is ray. Whoops, not equals. What am I doing? Minus... There we go, FC, because that is going down in the Y direction. And then I already know that RDY is positive based on the last thing that I did. So I'm going to say positive RDY because it is pushing up in the Y direction. So let's start plopping some numbers in there. Ray minus 600 plus 637.5. Equals zero. So then if I do my fancy pantsy math, hopefully I don't mess this up, should be 37.5 left over equals zero. And if I subtract 37.5 on both sides, ray is a negative 37.5 pounds, which tells me that my initial guess was wrong. So that negative means I gotta flip that puppy. So let's do it. So we know Ray has an overall magnitude of 37.5, but in order to maintain static equilibrium, Ray's gotta be going down in the Y direction. Perfect, okay. So notice how we had to flip a couple things. That's all right, because that's gonna happen a lot. Now, the part that we haven't talked about is step number four. So let's move on to that where we need to figure out a couple of angles for our next step. So I'm just going to take each of those triangles and I'm going to try to figure out what one of those angles might be. 
And you'll see why in the next video, uh, but we want to get this part figured out. So let's go, we've got what? 24 feet. We've got 12 feet. We've got 12 feet and we've got eight feet. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try and solve for this angle right here and then this angle right here. So if I go back to my trig ideas and I need to find this angle, uh, this is my hypotenuse, this is my opposite, this is my adjacent. So since I have my opposite, my adjacent, I must be using Sokotoa tangent. So let's set that up. So tangent of our angle, we're going to call that theta for right now, is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So 12 divided by 24. Now if our job is to figure out what that angle is, we're going to have to use inverse tangent to solve for that. So if I do inverse tangent on both sides, theta equals tangent inverse of 12 over 24. Uh, let me let me show you what that looks like on the calculator if you haven't if you're not too familiar with that. So in my TI-84, what I'm going to do is my tangent button's right there. So I'm going to go second tangent because my tangent inverse is up there. And I'm going to go 12 divided by 24. And that gives me my angle. So I have an angle of 26.57 degrees. And I'm going to do the exact same process over on this guy. So I have my hypotenuse, my opposite, my adjacent. So again, my tangent of my angle that I'm looking for is opposite over adjacent. So 12 over 8. And in order to get that theta by itself, I need to do my inverse tangent on both sides, sort of. So inverse tangent of 12 over 8. And one more time, I'm going to go second to tangent, 12 over 8, to get an angle of 56.31, if we round to a couple decimals, degrees. Excellent. Okay, we've done all the hard work. Now we just need to redraw this and get ready for our internal forces. So I'm going to redraw this puppy and feel free to follow along because we'll use this example for our internal forces so we don't have to do a completely separate problem. Get that long guy right there. And I could fill the silence with weird ideas going through my head, but you guys probably don't want to hear that stuff. That guy's 500 pounds, ready. is 637.5 FC is 600 Ray which we found that was actually going down 37.5 pounds Rack same idea found was a negative value is 500 pounds. We found our angle, so we found this to be 26.57 degrees. We found this to be what? 56.31 degrees. And I think that's all we need. So then our very last step is I'm going to erase the middle of all of my members. And I'm going to draw arrows pointing in because of reasons we're going to talk about in the next video when we go through internal forces and the method of joints. So there we go. We've got the external forces solved for a beam and for a truss. Now we need to get a little bit of practice before we can dive into the internal forces and a full truss solve.